Hi, Ed Holmwood from Elmo USA. Just wanted to do a quick video on our newest model, our new OX1. This is our least expensive camera, very simple, easy to use design. You get the picture, kind of, and you will get the picture in just a moment when I hook it up. This is a great unit, super stable, nice base. This is designed to work with our MX writing board, you'll see that in a minute. Hinged head so we can obviously get to a variety of different materials. I can actually rotate the head away or toward or away. Real quickly on the back side you'll notice a little hole. That's a microphone so you can use the microphone for Zoom meetings or Skype or whatever. This turns on the built-in LED light and the orange button is the focus button. On the base of the unit we have a quarter by 20 tripod thread screw. You'll also notice that there are two countersunk holes on the unit which would allow you to mount it directly to a surface should you need to semi-permanently mount it. And we'll put it all together. So let me get this set up real quick here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm using it with the MX writing board and I'm just slotting it in and that's just one piece. It all stays together. So it's very nice and simple to use. The unit itself is a USB 2.0 camera and I'm going to go ahead and plug in the USB cable. I probably should have done this in advance. And then I'm going to go ahead and take that cable, the Type A connector, and I'm going to plug it into my laptop real quick. So now we're all set to go. So I'm going to go ahead, you can see it in operation, I'm going to go ahead and leave the screen and I'm going to show you our web-based document camera solution. This thing is a really cool uh, solution. It doesn't require any downloads. There's no software issues. Um, however, you do need a Chrome-based browser. So Google Chrome, Opera. Um, I happen to use Vivaldi. The new Microsoft Edge, the latest version, the most recent version, is Chrome-based and it does work. I have tested it. So I'm going to go ahead and start my web browser. This is my home page. And I'm going to come up here and we're going to type the address in www.image mate, all one word, hyphen c dot com. Again, www.imagemate hyphen c dot com. And that will take us out to our opening screen for ImageMate C. And this is kind of, there's a disclaimer, some copyright information, but also to it is a user help guide as well. So there are a number of things that you can look at, particular features of the camera, how to use the whiteboard, what the content shows, functions of the various buttons in the software, and so forth. If you don't wish to see this, you can check down in the lower right hand corner, do not show this again, and that's fine. We can always get back to it in case you need to refer to it for some function you're not familiar with. So we're going to minimize that out, and you'll see here that we're connected with our OX1, and I'm going to jump back out real quick and show you me, and again, there's the OX1 live image. So we'll minimize that, and there it is, live image. And that's the nice thing, is it's a live image, it's web-based, no software to download, the image quality is quite good as you can see. So real quick, I'm going to start on the right-hand side of the toolbar on the bottom, and we're going to move across to the left. So it's just our Elmo logo. This question mark brings back up that user guide with all of the different functions and help things in it. Moving to this side, the four arrows, and this is a great tool, and you'll want to use this often. This takes it and makes it full screen. So what it does is automatically minimize your address bar and your book, bookmarks bar in your browser and your status bar in the bottom and your toolbar for Windows if that's what you're using or your icons for Mac. So you have a full screen view of everything. Now while I'm here real quick, I'm going to show you in the far upper right corner, you'll see a little stopwatch or timer. This allows us to create a countdown timer if we're timing tasks. So we can go ahead and start it and it'll start counting down. We can stop it if we wish to. Uh, if we're pausing to explain something, we can restart it when we wish to. Obviously, once we're done, we can go ahead and reset it and then ex uh, exit out of it. So that's a timer function. It's nice for kind of keeping everybody on track. Next to the uh, full screen button is the audio button. And now this, it says speaker, but I'm sorry, it's actually microphone. It allows me to turn on the microphone in the unit, and you'll probably hear a little bit of an echo. That's the built-in mic plus the mic I'm recording with. So I'm going to go ahead and mute that so it doesn't drive everybody crazy. But you can see it works quite well on the OX1. To the right, of, to the left of that, excuse me, is the source selector. 
So we can choose just a regular whiteboard if we wish to, and it's an electronic whiteboard. We have four options there. If we create something on a whiteboard, and I'll come back to it in just a minute, we'll create something on a whiteboard. You can save it, you can recall it, you can annotate over it a second time, third time, fourth time if you wish to. Contents takes you to the folders that you have on your computer. Now, when we save an image or save a video, the default save location is where your browser points to for its downloads. So typically in Windows it would be the downloads folder. This contents allows you, to, it opens up an explorer window and allows you to go through your computer, find your downloads folder, and recall those images should you wish to and so forth. And then it'll show the different cameras that are connected. I'm actually using an Elmo TX1 LX1 as the webcam, that's what you saw me on. Web camera is actually my built-in camera in my laptop. Right? And then Elmo camera is the way you'll see the OX1 and most of our new models will just be called an Elmo camera. So we'll go back to it and there we are live. You can see the difference in quality on that image right away. Next to that is a zoom button and I'm going to go ahead and pick something just a little more interesting than our logo. And we can zoom in and zoom out. Now, the thing to keep in mind, this is a digital zoom. So there is going to be a little bit of digital artifacts in it. It's not much we can do about that and this is a very inexpensive camera. So you can control the zoom from there. Next to that, the snowflake icon is a freeze frame which just allows us to freeze the frame, put different kinds of materials that we might want for our students to look at while they're paying attention to this and come back out to a live image when we need to. Okay, So that's freeze frame. Now rotate is exactly, or the, the circle is the rotate button so we can actually flip the image 180 degrees if we wish to. Oh, there we go. Next to that is the recording button. Now this records a video. So if I go ahead and start the video recording, it'll record audio, it'll record the video, and we'll go ahead and make some motion under there, so forth and so on. And then we'll go ahead and stop the recording. You noticed in the upper left hand corner there was a red little clapperboard that shows that the video is being made. Now we can find that video by going out here to contents, going to downloads. Now it's a, uh, a move file, you'll see it right here. If I double click on it, it'll open up in our browser window and it'll go ahead and play, which is a really interesting function. So it's a unique feature, completely unique feature. Now again, we're back to, uh, we're gonna go back to a live image. It's looping right now. So we'll go ahead and stop that by choosing our camera. And there we are back to live camera, not a video. So that's the recording function. So if I wanted to diagram some problems and so forth, I can super simply just record it and I can narrate that as well. Still images, same thing, allows us to create a still image of whatever we want on the screen. Too bad I can't flip just half the screen. And I'll show you that in just a moment because the next set of tools we have are annotation tools on the far left hand side. You'll see a pen tool, a marker tool, and our eraser tool. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the pen tool, and I'm using obviously a mouse. I'm going to choose a red ink. I'm going to come over here and I want to choose a slightly thicker line so that everyone can see it. Now I could try and annotate with my mouse and nobody's successful at doing that. But what is interesting is I do have a touch screen on my laptop. So I can come over to it and I can go ahead and annotate over that image. And I can do a number of different things. So one of the things that I can do, and again I'm going to go back out to full screen here for this, is I can take an image of that. Upper left you saw a camera icon. We took that image. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab a highlighter and I'm going to highlight some text as you can see and then I'm going to come back out and I'm going to save that image and there's that image saved again now when we come back to our contents folder we're going to go to contents and these are the last two images I saved you can see they're consecutively numbered by time so we're going to go ahead and click on the first image that didn't have the highlighting right however I can re-highlight over top of this if I want to. So that's a saved image that I just highlighted on. And just to show that there is a difference, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'll choose some blue ink and we'll add some 
blue graphics to it so you can see the difference. And we're going to come back and save that image real quick. And then we're going to go back out to image and we're going to go to contents. Now you notice those images stay in the queue. So this was the next image that we had created. Remember I had highlighted it in real time. So in my sources I have these images in the queue. It's only the last image so it doesn't show all the images I may open. It just shows the last one and then there is the very last one I did with all of the blue ink and so forth and so on. So that'll give you a really good idea how this works. So now the next tool we have, and you saw the highlighter and you saw the pen tool, is the eraser tool. So in its standard format, it just allows me to erase, sorry, it allows me to erase an area. Did I pick that? Let me pick the eraser. It allows me to erase a section, and of course it's not going to work for me. Oh, you know why this is a saved image? I'm so sorry. Let me go back to the Elmo camera image. There it is. We're going to choose the eraser now. And as you can see, I can erase just a portion of whatever it is I want to erase. Right? Or, if I want to, I apologize for that confusion, I can come out here and choose the complete erase, and it erases everything on the screen. So our pen tools and its palette of colors, our marker tool and its palette of colors, our eraser, which is obviously whatever you want to touch and erase you can, or erase the entire thing. The save image, the save video, the image rotate, the image freeze frame, right? our zoom control, our contents or sources of different things, right? our turn on our mic on and off, full screen on and off, right? our help guide, And then on the far left and right ends, you'll see change the layout of the menu. What this allows me to do is, let's say I have a particular preference on how I like my icons arranged, I can reverse the icon arrangement. So now my annotation tools are on the right-hand side and everything else is on the left-hand side. You'll also notice it went from a left arrow to a down arrow. This would just give me the option to minimize that toolbar if I wish. So again, we can flip the icons around, I can minimize the toolbar. Or, once I choose a particular item, the minute I touch the screen, it minimizes the toolbar so that I have the maximum amount of work area. So, on the OX1, super easy, really simple to use. Again, I'm going to come back out to a live, to a live image here of all of us. So here we are. And that's the OX1. You can see, nice, easy to use. Focus built-in light. You can see the lights on now. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. There you go. Super easy. And again, this is a document camera that has a retail price of $199. And it is a full-blown Elmo product. No question about it. So everyone, I'd like to say thank you for your time and I appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions, please visit us at www.elmousa.com backslash contact or backslash support. Or you can call us at one 800 947-3566, or as we like to say, 1-800-947-ELMO. Thank you so much. I hope everyone stays healthy, happy, and uh, you have a wonderful day.